There are the Chargers that are currently injured. Keenan Allen entered the game this week, and he's had that hamstring injury for a while now. Justin Herbert we knew about, but some new ones. And look, Joey Bosa, groin injury, he could be out for a while. Rashawn Slater, torn biceps, out for the year. Jalen Guyton, Chargers Ooh. receiver, tears in ACL in garbage time. J.C. Jackson had that ankle problem. You know, Chris... I've said this before, specifically yeah, in relation to the Chargers. At some point, it's not bad luck. At some point, it's bad training, bad flexibility, bad nutrition, bad whatever. And when you watch all those games and you see guys get twisted up in knots and they jump up and they're fine, at some point, it isn't just stuff happens. At some point, you've got deeper flaws in your organization when it comes to getting your players in the best possible condition to perform and to withstand getting injured when they are playing. It can't just be bad luck when it's happening for the Chargers every year over and over and over again. Yeah, I, I'm like, I, I mean, I'm with you. I mean, I'm certainly, you know, skeptical or, you know, wonder what goes on, the fact that they kind of have to deal with this all the time. And I think something has to do probably with even the type of players they get in general. I don't know. There, there could be a lot of things here. You know, maybe not paying attention to the injury history, history quite, uh, quite close enough when they come out of the draft. You know, maybe not paying attention or not knowing enough about free agency and their injury history. There's a little of that, you know, let alone they got some guys that, you know, guys that we like to watch play football that are kamikaze. But we know, like, when you have those kamikaze teams, it's like, hey, coach says run through the wall and I just do it. Yeah, it's it's going to lead to... Sometimes the wall wins. Exactly. Sometimes the, the wall wins. That's what I mean. You got guys like Derwin James or Joey Bosa who know no different of, like, I just go. That That's that's the, the risk of having those type of players. It is. So I think there could be a lot that goes into that conversation, certainly. But, damn. I mean, it's, it, is, it is, Mike. I mean, to your point, it's unbelievable. It really is. And these are marquee players, game changers. And then, you know, you worry about the offensive linemen, especially because Herbert's dealing with the, the rib issues, and they're not a very good running team to begin with when they were healthy. It's going to be on the right arm of Herbert. So now they got to deal with trying to protect him without two of the better players at their position in the league. I mean, Corey Lindsley's one of the better centers in football. Rashawn Slater is definitely in that conversation for best pass-protecting left tackle in the NFL. So... Man, they're big blows to uh, the the Charger team to try to manage this situation here as you know best they can, and we'll see where it goes. They're a beat up football team. How quickly a great vibe to start the season right? can change. They beat the Raiders week one. They have the Thursday night short week game with the Chiefs, almost pull that off, and then they get obliterated by so, the Jaguars. So and all these injuries now. Well, and so like to to this is this to me this to me is a great conversation here because this might be also something we talk about. You know, first off, you're right. Like even after the loss, right? There was a great taste in their mouth against Kansas City. We we're still going. Damn, they look good. They looked the part. I'm not sure they weren't the better team on the field really that night. You know, but then, oh, wait, now you lose this game. But here's the, there's the other point, too, Mike, that I just wanted to make, and I'm glad you kind of went there because I've gotten this written down. Oh, wait, but, but you know, they won't attribute any of these injuries to the fact that maybe they played that Thursday night game four days, you know, in a row, right? So here they are the week after they're beat up. Oh, it didn't happen on Thursday night. Well, you know, who knows? Maybe the wear and tear of that game so early in the season, it's just something I think about as a player because I'm always thinking about protecting players that way. But, I, you know, I, I do think it's something to look for. It's maybe not that Thursday game. It's the week after. It's the wear and tear of the four games and then the accumulation that lead up to this that maybe wears them out and gets them hurt for this game. And I agree with you there. You know, when we hear the injury rate data get quoted by the NFL about Thursday night games, it's an apples to apples. What is the rate of injury on Thursday night versus any other day of the week? It's not nearly that simple. You're right. You've got the shorter week that forces a guy to play before he's maybe fully recovered and does that linger into the next week. Right. And there are more factors that go into it. I, I I don't disagree with you there, but with the Chargers, I just think that there's a deeper issue in the organization. I hear you. And at some point, at some point, and again, I love Brandon Staley. He's got to get it turned around because they're going to be on Sean Payton watch before too long. There's going to be teams that are in Sean Payton mode as we get closer and closer to Thanksgiving and into December, because we know the factors. And in fact, at some point, I think it was Barry Jackson, the Miami Herald, reported that the Chargers were one of the teams that he'd be interested in. Of course. Why wouldn't you be? Warm weather. Right. You got Justin, Justin Herbert. Herbert. Right. My God. 
and I could see Peyton walking through the door there. And I'm not trying to start anything here, but I'm just I'm just analyzing the situation. I could see Peyton walking through the door saying, "Hey, we got to revamp training staff, strength and conditioning." Because this is why, hey, hey, uh, Spanoses, this is why you have all those injuries. You got people telling you it's bad luck. Bull crap. It ain't bad luck. It's bad organization. It's bad flexibility. Bad, bad practice nutrition. habits. Who knows? Right. Exactly right. Yep. You're right. It, it, it's definitely. And, and you know, you're, Mike, you're not being wrong. I mean, Sean Payton's going to be the guy that hovers over everybody this year. I mean, he is going to be the damnedest, shiniest, brightest object in the world for a lot of these owners that are thinking about making a coaching change, and especially if they have a quarterback like Justin Herbert. And add that to the fact that the the you know framework of that offense has been laid down already because there's a Sean Payton ex coach there, and 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 with the Chargers. So yes, I mean, you know, all these guys are going to have to deal with Sean Payton in that situation and the pressure of that and. Brandon Staley have to block it out, but you're, you're right. There's there's something going on there with the Chargers. Peyton made it clear himself last week, making the rounds, you know, as part of his media gig. He'll come back in the right circumstance, and I think he will be back next year. The question is, who's going to make the move behind the scenes? All the stuff that isn't supposed to happen, that happens all the time. Who's going to set this up behind the scenes before we even get to the end of the season? Because I guarantee you somebody will. Hi, it's Mike Florio. Thanks for watching PFT on YouTube. Hit subscribe for the latest news and analysis from Pro Football Talk.